good-looking mama who never was around. But she grew up tall and she grew up right with them Indiana boys on them Indiana nights. This is the Community Solutions Podcast. Jason Bradley, Andrew Richter, here in the beautiful Midwest, especially this time of year. How you doing? Well, I'm doing pretty darn good. Yeah? Uh, you know, normally I'm doing kind of crappy when I come in here to talk about what we talk about. Well. But, and, uh, you know, the subject matter probably won't make me happy, but I, I'm choosing to have a sunny day today. That's good. Interesting thing happened to me today. Uh, today. Let me think about the song here okay. for a second. And this is the second time this has happened. Kind of a disgusting story, but I, I <laughs> feel compelled to share it. I went to a holiday gas station today. I won't say where on my way home from work. Doesn't matter. Okay, they're all the same, right? Pretty much, know. you know. In in whatever you know yeah. city it was in, doesn't matter. And the cashier or the clerk or whatever you want to call them had a had a booger hanging out of their nose by about four inches. Oh yeah. This is the second time in my life this has happened. Huh. And <laughs> we're all kind of looking at each other in line. Poor guy doesn't know. Yeah. And literally, you could have high-fived it when you walked by. <laughs> and I, I don't know what it is about gas stations, but every time I go inside, I am always behind somebody spending $100 on lottery tickets. Yes. And they want five of these and ten of these, and then I'm going to have these yeah. cigarettes. No, not that one, yeah. this one. You and know? then they have to scratch them off right there yes. at the counter, right? they got to get their color lighter. Yes. They have to have that color of lighter. <laughs> so finally, after that idiot left, I was next. Yes. And I just, I had to say something. Yeah. I just said, sir, and there's like five people behind me. I felt terrible. Yeah. But somebody has to wave a skunk in front of him, and of course, <laughs> of course, it's me. Who else? <laughs> right. And I just said, excuse me, but you have a huge booger hanging out of your nose. <laughs> and the poor guy was yeah. just as red as a tomato yeah. and grabbed a Kleenex. And, yeah. I mean, literally grabbed a whatever your Henry or whatever they call it and pulled it out of there. But I'm going to tell yeah. you something. It was probably um, another quarter inch and he'd have been chewing on it. That's how long it was <laughs> oh out of his word. nose. Wow. It was a total snot rocket. Wow. So. Uh, by the way, by yes. the way, uh, so disgusting story. That's the second time yes. in my life I have done that to a cashier at a holiday gas station. <laughs> you know, wow. so just, I, I mean, go figure. What are the odds that could happen to me twice? Now, yeah. uh, Jay, would you recite me the title of that song again? I'm not giving you the title of the song. Well, I don't remember the lyrics. I can read you the lyrics again. You want the lyrics? Yeah, give me the lyrics. She grew up in an Indiana town, had a good-looking mama who never was around. But she grew up tall and she grew up right with them Indiana boys on them Indiana nights. So that's not the name of the song, though. No, that would be a long title. Yeah. I know it, too. Oh, yeah. Give me another, give me another 30 seconds. Okay. I don't have a story like that. Although I used to play in a band with a guy that uh, every once in a while he'd go, Hey, you got a gig booger. Yeah. <laughs> I do recall I do yes. recall back in the eighties there was in Crystal here, there was a pizza parlor called Beaks Pizza. Excellent pizza. Oh my goodness. Yeah, uh, and that's why it's still around? No, it's not still around. <laughs> It was on yes. that little strip there on Bass Lake Road where the businesses are all real mm -hmm. butted up against Brentwood. Yeah. And occasionally, like three times a year, my parents would take us there and we'd all dine in. It was a, yes. They had a dine in. I don't know if they did deliveries, mm -hmm. but we lived so close it didn't matter. And uh, I remember one you could sit there and watch them make the pizza. I remember there was like this window mm -hmm. to watch them make. I remember they had this really big guy one time making a pizza. They were very busy. My sister and I are peeking in, watching. And while he's making sweat from his nose and his forehead is dropping oh. into into our uh, into our oh, pepperoni. No. No. And that's why they're closed. <laughs> yeah, you got there a little bacteria is. with your <laughs> little meat lovers bacteria pizza. Oh. It was, but trust me, I mean, this is a big dude, oh, yeah. and he, he was working hard and uh, had the old watery armpits. Uh -huh. And so it was. Normally, this pizza is pretty salty, but it's out of control tonight. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know what happened. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so I just I remember that. Now now back to the yes, song. Yes. Why does that sound like a Tom Petty song to me? 
Well, I'm going to say Tom be. Petty is the one who sings that. Yeah, do you have a title for the, your Tom Petty song? Is it the Mary Jane song? Or, yeah. Uh, is yeah. it really? Yeah. Okay, all right. I was humbly Last dance myself. with Mary Jane, yeah. Okay. Oh. Hey, that's ten and a quarter. Yeah. Whew. Wow. That's, all right. Yeah. Huh. I told you. I now well, now wait a minute. Yeah. I get I want I want ten and three quarters there because you, because you did you know it was it was uh you know I didn't know the title and I got it just off your lame lyrics. And I, I got, they're Tom Petty's lyrics. I uh, didn't write them. Yeah, but I mean you you, you didn't say the name in it. So Well was, that didn't have to do with our subject today. The whole deal is I read lyrics that have to do with the subject of the podcast. And normally I like Indiana. Yeah, there are a few cities in there I might not like. Yeah, okay. Gary being pretty at the oh, top of that list, yeah. the city that smells like a continuous fart. But you know, <laughs> been through there several times. It's yes, bad. It's bad. I mean, you'd think that uh, you think all of the garbage and all of the sulfur and all of everything is all like there. Yeah. That's what you'd think. Like there's a big pile called Gary. <laughs> It's it. almost as if the Chicago Mafia cut <laughs> yeah. a deal to shut to shuttle all the crap out of yeah, Chicago. Yeah, all the dead bodies, all the Capone, no. Bugsy Siegel guys, they're all buried, <laughs> stinking up Gary. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just, <laughs> it's bad. Just don't just keep yeah. the windows down. To all of our listeners and Gary, we apologize. Yeah, and you know, here's the yeah. thing. It's all in good fun. It, well, here, you know what it smelled like? It smelled like back in my day. Yes. I remember those little stink bombs somebody led like on the bus uh, or something like that uh, and they would just be the worst thing that's what it smells like gary and yeah those those stink bombs were the the bomb literally that went off on your bus <laughs> I, I don't care if it was 20 below those windows had to come down <laughs> okay oh anyway yeah serious subject jay serious okay. subject. i'll we put do, on my serious face we do talk serious things here on this program yes we do Recently, um, we've talked a lot about uh, school districts. We've talked a lot about uh, discipline policies and so on and so forth and our kind of head-scratching reactions to some of them. We had a little incident at Armstrong High School. Somebody yeah. uh, beat up a, a special ed assistant or hall monitor or whatever he was. Uh, you know, a, a Dirty Harry or whatever got beat up in the hallway. Some some other idiot filmed it. And, of course, first thing anybody does, especially one of these millennials, is put it out on for the whole world to see. Right. And you'll be glad to know, Jay. Yes. Here's your tax dollars at work. Okay? I mean, and this is classic government here. Um, the video of uh, the assault mm -hmm. of a staff member, we're calling it a staff member, yes. John Jacobs is his name, um, is being investigated by the Robbinsdale School District and the Plymouth Police Department. Mm -hmm. So, we're, so both both entities are going to spend our tax dollars investig investigating. Yes. They can't do one. Okay, no, we're going to do two. Mm -hmm. So... Both of them are investigating this. Well, we're in good hands. Apparently, this ninth grade male, well, I guess that's one of the 26 uh, genders, had <laughs> just returned to school after being suspended for a previous altercation. Well, he learned his lesson. Absolutely. I mean, that's sure the discipline policy sure working. Uh, he'll be back in three days. Don't he worry will about be. It. I'll point out it is a minority. No, they'll probably. I don't care about probably, that, but the district uh, does. They'll, they'll probably keep him out till after Thanksgiving. I yeah. forgot about that. It's a short week next week. That's right. I mean, yeah. you know, the, what do they go? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and that's it? Yeah, something like um, that. Wednesday was his first day back, which is the day of this assault. The principal, uh, pretty new on the job, right? Yeah. Um, this year. Yeah, the interim principal. Yeah, he's new uh, on the he's, job. He's year. permanent now, I'm uh, pretty sure. Yeah, uh, that, that's my understanding. If he if he wanted the job. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, maybe maybe he isn't that. After this, maybe he wants yeah, may, <laughs> Maybe not. Take your, take your uh -huh. pension and run. Uh, Eric, with a C and a K, D, Nordby. Mm -hmm. Can we make sure the D is in there? Issued a statement 
to parents and staff regarding the incident. A physical altercation between a student and staff member occurred today. This incident was recorded, blah, 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 blah. Upon conclusion of this investigation, we will follow appropriate district policies. Notice what he said there that catches my ear. Appropriate district policies. Uh, and uh, we're not going to take stern action. We're not going to, you know, uh, I don't know how to word this. It's, it doesn't sound like we're, we're, we're going to um, consider all the factors here, right? Yes. You know, maybe this kid's from a broken home. Maybe this kid uh, is bipolar. Maybe this kid has uh, got schizophrenia. And we're going to come with, come up, we're going to try to investigate this and hope it goes away. Mm hmm. You know, I mean, that doesn't sound, um, it's kind of like, uh, you know, something happens at a business, a harassment lawsuit or something, and, you know, somebody will send out a memo saying, look, we're not going to tolerate this anymore, and we're going to come down hard on blah, 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 blah. That's not what I hear here. Well, Am I reading this into no, it wrong? No, but I, I think that, you know, principals can only do so much. Granted, there are a whole right. bunch he's, of them. He's not the one making the po district policy, right. let's remember. This yeah. guy's two months on the job here. Right. Yeah. Well, I, he did come from Cooper before that. Oh, was he an assistant there? Or was he the principal of Cooper? I think he was the principal oh, of really? Cooper. Oh, really? Yeah. Who was the principal then? I it changes like every six weeks. Oh, does it? Nobody I... wants to be at Cooper. Well, they had a guy there that people seem to like. I can't think of his name. I know it's inappropriate to say this, but he was a black guy. Favor or a Frazier or something? Yeah, that was a while ago. Oh, was it? He, oh, yeah, so he, was, much for, he was good. Yeah. So much for me knowing. Yeah. He seemed to be uh, yeah. I mean, well received by yeah. people. I, I don't know. Yeah, but you know, if somebody's well received, like your principal doll was at, mm -hmm. at Armstrong before, that's a reason to get rid of them. Right. You know, we don't want them to be independent here. We don't want them no, to No, we don't <laughs> want people doing things that are outside of the district. Yeah. Vision. <laughs> now, I interrupted you. What were you, what were you thinking? I don't remember. Oh, oh no. just uh, their, their hands are tied. I mean, there's only so much they can do. And there are obviously principals that are happy as a lark to go along with the district vision. But there are those that... They can only do so much. And it's not a matter of just going over to the next school district because the next one's just as bad as that one. <laughs> Probably. I hear, hear this line here. Yeah. Please continue to speak with your student about making good choices and engaging in appropriate social media use. So we're worried about social media now. Well, now you should be. Yeah. But, again, you can fix that there at the school, Mr. Principal, with uh, uh, cell phones in your – they stay in your locker. Mm-hmm. You don't bring them in the hallway. You don't bring, I mean, you know, parents can say, hey, you know, my ninth grader doesn't need that, doesn't need Facebook. Right. Doesn't he, I mean, there's a lot of ways to fix yeah. that that are pretty simple, you know, and uh, I realize that the principal can't do anything about what goes on at home, and I, I do get that, but, yeah. you know, I don't know. I got a feeling that the hammer's not going to come down on this, that this kid will be given a third chance, a fifth chance, a twelfth chance, a three hundredth chance, and that just guarantees that incidents like this will continue to happen. Yeah. And by the way, the person filming this is just as guilty. Mm -hmm. You don't sit there and film something while somebody's getting the no. essay kicked out of them. Not unless you're planning on using... I mean, you shouldn't ever stand by. You should break it up, but... I mean, it, or it go is, run and get another adult. Right. But it is, I will say, it's good to have the evidence of what happened. Okay, but <laughs> true, but you don't go but posting don't go, it on but, Facebook no. if that's no, your No, you intent. turn it over to the authorities. So, I mean, yeah. but to me, it's like driving the getaway car is the, you're as guilty as the person who mm. robbed the bank. And this, this do some, you should be some real discipline on who mm -hmm. filmed that. I agree. So, and put it on social media. That's ridiculous. So, yeah. interesting to see what happens there, huh? Or is it not interesting? Yeah, I guess we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jay, we should move on. I suppose we should. Move on to, oh, by the way, one, yes. more, one last note. By the way, thanks to all the hooligans and all that who attended Duck Duck Days last year. I it got is, it shut. It, it is now shut down. It's a one day. Are thing. you I'm kidding not joking. me? This was in the Sun Post. Did I not send this to you? No. Okay. Duck Duck Days is officially over. Ah. Uh, 
There's a one day barbecue or something. The softball tournaments are still there. Yeah. But the entire thing, fireworks, everything is shut down now for good. So, uh, l- l- again, t- that good old New Hope City Council yeah. again. I mean, <laughs> again, tale of two cities here. You know, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. It was the best of cities, it was the worst of cities. Crystal had some problems at Crystal Frolics. I remember that they back in the day. They took care of it. Yeah. It's done. Frolics is probably bigger than it's ever been, yes. to be honest. Yeah. And New Hope decides to just shut her down. You know, let the hooligans huh? run the city, New Hope, and your your housing policies have helped ha- ha- make that happen. So, yep, and again, the same people will just keep getting voted into office because nobody's standing up to run. So, just like the budget, uh, it'll uh, the duck duck days is rotting in John Elder's colon. All right, what? Um, <laughs> My word. <laughs> Moving on. Rotten colons and boogers. This show. I, We're off to a great e- start. E- every week. I told you I was to in. A, I told you I was in a giggly mood today. Yeah. Or whatever you want to call it. I don't know what you want to call it. Indiana, state of Indiana, Jay, I've been through there. And why are we talking about Indiana? Because that's not Minnesota. Because they got a town called French Lick. Hmm. That why? Is that like Salt Lick? Like, no, that's okay. isn't that where uh, Woody from Cheers? Isn't that where he's from? Oh, maybe I, I don't. Or Larry remember. Bird. Oh yeah, Larry Bird. You ever been a president from Indiana? Benjamin Harrison, maybe. Uh, William Henry Harrison. Maybe. I think they were from. I think Indiana was a territory in William Henry's days. I don't think we had hmm. taken it from Old Tecumseh yet. Yeah, I could. Uh, I could. <laughs> Google that, I guess, but it's not important. Yeah, it's really not. <laughs> well, Mike Pence is from Indiana, and so He's is Dan Quayle, vice president. So yeah, yeah okay. So I've had a couple of vice presidents at least. Yeah, well, that's just off the top of my head, too. Wow. If I thought about it, maybe come up with one more. <laughs> no, I yeah. don't think so. No. Well, who knows? You know, there could be uh, there could be somebody hiding back there. I mean, we don't know. Uh, we don't know where everybody's from. That's a long. That's a long list. Forty-five presidents, and we gotta try and you know keep tabs on them all. Oh, well, what's the most? Virginia, Ohio, um, um, New York, probably or Trump, Texas. Van Buren, both yeah. Roosevelts. Mm-hmm. All right, enough with that. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Benjamin Harrison was indeed from Indiana. Hmm. Indianapolis. God, Indiana. I'm good. Yeah. Look at that. Of all the presidents, too. I mean, either him or Millard Fillmore. Okay. Oh, and there's boy. another New York guy, Fillmore. Fillmore, that useless. <laughs> 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 the only president to sign his political party's death. Yes. <laughs> well, th- that remains to be seen. Barack Obama yeah. may have, uh, with some of the shenanigans going on. Uh, Maybe. Say. But why, yes. why are we talking Indiana? Well, uh, there is a guy that is running for president, current mayor of South Bend, Indiana, Pete Buttigieg, or uh, Buttigieg as... uh, Buttigieg. (laughs) Anyways, uh, why are we talking about that on a show about Community Solutions Minnesota? Minnesota. (laughs) Because the guy is running for president. He's mayor of a town that's slightly larger than um, St. Cloud or Duluth. I'd say it's more akin to Duluth because of its location. Um, but we wanted to take a look and see, just because of the national spotlight on on the town, how is this guy running a city? Well, and also, let's. how come we don't know anything about what he's doing? I mean, I mean, there's a feeling out there that he's not a serious contender, and I don't know that I share that. Yeah. Because I still contend that other will win the Democratic nomination. As possible. I mean, right now there are polls that show him up in Iowa and in New Hampshire. There's polls that show him way down. Nationally, he still is not up there whatsoever. I mean, nationally, he's still in the, you know, he's maybe two points ahead of Amy Klobuchar and then one point ahead of don't know, don't no opinion. Right. But, I mean, you know. Here's the thing. National polls, to a certain degree, have to be ignored. Yes. Even polls in these states somewhat have to be ignored because of the way every state proportions a delegate. Yeah. Then you add to it the Democrats with their superdelegates. 
Yep. Which there's about a third of their delegates are members of Congress, yep. <laughs> former members of Congress, former hey, cabinet members. They're for, party of the people. For Obama or for Clinton. I mean, it's one of the things that, you they know, and I'm no Bernie Sanders of fan. The people. But it's, yeah, but it's one of the things that yeah. made him winning impossible because right. Clinton and Obama put all of those people into office. Now, that's not quite as true now. Um, but still, I mean, yeah. it's. You know, and I think the reason the former vice president is allegedly still ahead in national polls, I think electability is mm-hmm. the number one thing that yeah. is focused on in that. You go state to state and you get 20 different answers, and that's how right. it's decided. It's just like, just like the presidential election itself, okay? It's we're mm-hmm. union of states. So, and I think... There, I think the vice president's very, very weak. So I still contend other will win this, whoever that other is, whoever hangs around the longest. And it would be nice to see somebody distinguish themselves other than the lady from Hawaii. I can't think. I never can remember. Gabbard. Yeah, I can yeah. never remember her name. Gabbard. But yeah. she's the only one that seems to. And she's, I can't tell if I think she's half nutty or if I think she's half um, you know, uh, doesn't look like somebody who's going to cave to somebody, mm-hmm. but but a few things she thinks are just way out there. Oh, yeah. Anyhow, so Mayor Pete. Yes. Okay, who we haven't heard a word about South Bend. Right. Not a thing. Nobody asks him about it. Nobody quizzes him about it. Nobody, uh, I don't want to say exposes anything, but you think, you know, it seems like, I'll use the 2012 Republican nomination as mm-hmm. an example, where every single candidate at some point seemed to be winning, mm-hmm. whether it was Centurum, whether it was Newt, uh, Romney ultimately. Of course, Romney had run before. Yeah. I'm trying to think of who else ran. Herman Cain was another. Yeah. Uh, and there were a bunch. And I, I can't remember them. I'm getting 12 and 16 mixed up a little bit. Every one of them went under an intense anal examination. Mm-hmm. Okay. No, it was not a colonoscopy. They didn't look in there and take pictures. They dug around and dug a bigger, you know, I mean, it was, it was, they all had these just every single thing they said or, or some quote Newt Gingrich made in 1988 comes in, and they've done it to Vice President Biden yeah. to a certain extent. Now, a little bit. I mean, they have more than when he's run before because before his candidacy was not considered serious. All right. Mayor Pete, though, hasn't been challenged whatsoever. No. No, why? I don't know. You know, I, I, well, do they really challenge any Democrats? Well, at all? I, I don't media? know. I, I, no, but I think Democratic voters, I think, may. And I think they ask better questions than yeah. the media does, if you want to be blunt about it. But, I mean, I've seen, you know, ever since Elizabeth Warren went from five points to nine points Mm -hmm. it seems like everything she says is being you know even msnbc has stopped defending her to some level yeah um i think that uh everybody else has kind of gone up and gone down it's like as soon as somebody gets the spotlight on them yeah you know all of a sudden they, they go away i don't know do they really do or not but i mean this guy not only isn't being challenged. He isn't running on anything that he did while he was mayor. Right. And I'm kind of just flabbergasted at that, 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 you know, the only thing you've ever been elected to do, you're not talking about. Mm-hmm. So what's going on in South Bend? I mean, is it that he doesn't want to? Is it that nobody cares to go there and find out what South Bend's really like? Yeah. Well, and it's it's funny you bring that up. I mean, that's kind of how this whole topic came around this week is like, uh, we were like, well, what are we doing for the podcast this week? And it's like, hey, why don't we take this a look is, at South this, Bend? This is not yeah. normally how we pick a, a topic. No, but no, we way. usually have a list. Yeah. Yeah, let's pick some. The Whitman off the list. sampler. Yeah. <laughs> this week it was just kind of like spitballing. Hey, why, why don't we look at uh, South Bend with Mayor Pete and uh, see how much it's like every other city we talk about? Right. I mean, it's a dual purpose. Yeah. It's it's seeing the same things everywhere, mm-hmm. and at the same time, we're probably the only show in the nation talking about what he did as mayor. Yeah, or is doing. I yeah. mean, he is the mayor. Well, yeah, you know. And by the way, 
You go to their website, South Bend, Indiana's yes. website. You will not not see his name <laughs> That's true. all over it. You will not not see it. Yes. I mean, if you, if when Rudy Giuliani was the mayor of New York, you didn't see his name all over New York City's website. When he ran for president, his name was not all over New York City's. Of course, I, I don't know when they got a website. I mean, it, but, you know, maybe <laughs> well, it wasn't think, back in the late well, 90s. Probably. It might have been. I'm sure that he was New still, York probably did. He was still the mayor in the 2000s. I mean, he was America's mayor after 2000. Yeah, I you think know, I think he was. He, I think his term ended not long after 9/11, if yeah. I remember right. I, I can't. I I, I want to say they have odd year elections there, but I might be wrong about yeah. that. Yeah, no, they they had. I'm sure websites at the, as New York especially. Well, who knows? I mean, New York uh, yeah. used to be the forefront of. Yeah, if you, could, you know Frank's words: "If you can make it in New York, yeah. you know, can anywhere, right?" But that's really yeah. not the case anymore. Nobody but, wants to go yeah. there. So. Pig's Knuckle, Arkansas, probably did not have a website. But. <laughs> <laughs> now, come on, now, a lot of those pig's knuckles can pay for a lot of websites here. So right. it's you know, I'm just saying that your smaller towns didn't have them, and probably and in Minnesota, some of them still, still don't. don't. Believe me, we've gone through them, and some of them still aren't. <laughs> Or they technically have one, but I can't tell you how to find anything on it. Yeah, it's Windows 95. Yes. So, Jay, explain to the audience. Now, you said that it's similar in population to St. Cloud, Duluth. So what is that exactly? South Bend's in the northern part of Indiana, kind of up there between Michigan and Wisconsin there, not far from Lake Michigan. Not far from Gary. <laughs> and uh, Notre Dame University, of course, is on the outskirts of town. In fact, I don't think yes. it's actually in South Bend. No. So no fighting Irish live in, in South Bend exactly. Yes. So what, what, what is about, what else can we, do we know about South Bend? I mean, what, what uh, you know, well, what else can uh, we share before we get into... After the, Mayor last, Skeet. Yeah. After the last census, they had, uh, what, 101,168 residents. Um, so, uh, of course, that has changed, and we're about to go through another census. Um, so th they're still saying, uh, as of 2018, the estimate is 101,860. Hmm. So, um, so a slight increase from 2010. Not slight, more. yeah. Although they're saying, like the metropolitan statistical area around it has uh, three thousand or three hundred eighteen thousand five hundred eighty-six. I wonder how far that goes. And, and the so. combined statistical area is seven hundred twenty-one thousand two hundred ninety-six. So the the metropolitan statistical area would be mostly, uh, you know, the those immediate suburbs and then the combined would take in some of the townships and the outlying suburbs and stuff like that okay. so um yes it is it, it's not right on uh lake michigan it is a little bit off a little yeah. bit off yeah a little bit east of that um so i mean it's a decent sized city it is a little bigger than than like duluth and st cloud um it, it is the fourth largest city in indiana uh, of course, Indianapolis is the the largest, um, but other than that, um, you yeah. maybe a couple of other things uh, just to throw out there. They have a different mayor council setup than you might see in a lot of cities. The uh, mm -hmm. uh, executive, the, the mayor has more executive authority. That's not the weak mayor. Uh, right, it, it's like a larger city. I mean, yeah. like here. I mean, common council yeah. is what they call it. Okay. Hmm. Um, yeah, they're, they're uh, all elected to four-year terms there. Yeah. Um, they also elect the city clerk. I don't know if you knew uh -oh. that, but they the city clerk, the uh, which was the record keeper mm -hmm. uh, of the city, uh, is elected. Okay. Um, they use some old-fashioned words too. A controller. City comptroller. Com comptroller. Uh -huh. That is the f financial. Yes. Uh, I call him financial geek, but the financial person uh, that uh, that is not elected, however, mm -hmm. but yes, that they do have that as well. You'll be glad to know. Let's start with Mayor Pete. I mean, um, you know, we talk about you know his his 
record or lack thereof or not really listening to it very much. Mayor Pete was born on January 19th, 1982. You know, I, I just can't get past how old I'm getting. You know, is, is there just something, I, I mean, I just can't get past it, yeah. that somebody running for president is younger than I am by five years. Yeah. That is, that is odd, you know? It's like I missed my shot. <laughs> no, you, you got plenty of time. But at 29 yeah. years old, he was elected huh. uh, as mayor of in in 2011. Okay. Um, not the youngest mayor of Indiana ever. Really, Shiler Koufax the third. Koufax wasn't one of his uh, relatives, of vice president. Shiler Colfax, does that sound right? I don't know. Somebody or a in the pit for the Dodgers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It could have been him. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> See if this guy was left-handed. Yes. Uh, was 28 years old when elected in 1898. Hmm. So the second youngest. Uh, one of the first things that happened under Mayor Pete was they passed a uh, he demoted the police chief. Hmm. A Daryl Boinkins. Boy, <laughs> I do like that name. Uh, for illegally recording phone calls. Oh. Uh, I don't know. Um, uh, the police communications were uh, officers making racist remarks. Hmm. Apparently that was the big, uh, big thing that uh, went on there. Because at, soon after... And I'm kind of doing this on the fly, Jay, so just help me out here. They passed. Let me see something. Where did I see this? Uh, I can't find it. I'll come back to it. Okay. Damn, it was a good one. Okay. Okay. Uh Well, um, I'm just kind of looking through some of these things that he's done. Um, he is the past president of Indiana Urban Mayors Caucus. Oh God, that sounds good. I mean, that, there's a group, you know, like we have we have groups like that here, you know, Northwest uh, the North uh, got a Metro million Mayors of them. Association. Yeah, that, and so uh, that isn't any different in Indiana either, apparently. Uh, yes? No, well, keep going on uh, that. Yep. Uh, the Northern Indiana Mayor's Roundtable. Uh, he serves on the board of the Truman National Security Project and the United States Conference of Mayors. And we've talked about that group before. Yeah, there's one meeting in San Antonio, right, as we speak. Mm -hmm. The National League of something. Cities, I think, is holding something down there. Of course they are. Um... Yeah, on March 26, 2012, South Bend passed the Human Rights Ordinance outlawing discrimination in employment, housing, or other areas against citizens based on race, religion, color, sex, disability, national origin, ancestry, sexual orientation, or gen gender identity, or familial status. Mm. Lot there. Yes. Uh, it is one of only six Indiana cities to offer legal protections for citizens based on gender identity or sexual orientation. Now, is that, is that, um, uh, city jobs or is that everywhere? I don't know that they can control what happens in private industry. Listen to this, though. Yes. The protections are enforced by the city's Human Rights Commission, which oversees investigation and legal, legal recourse in case of discrimination. Wow. Now, is that for anybody in the city? Uh, I don't know how they... <laughs> Because with these boards and commissions, I mean, when in a larger city like this where you have a strong mayor, oftentimes those boards and commissions are, serve at the pleasure of the mayor, not at the pleasure of the council, like with a weak mayor city. True, although if they're um, written into city code, I think 
Yeah, I don't know how it works in Indiana, though. Right. I mean, I, I really don't know, so maybe I shouldn't uh, pretend to know. <laughs> but, um, yeah, they. I wouldn't imagine that they're able to... to have any say over what happens in private business government i i you know would that I, be the county attorney or the you know uh wouldn't that be a civil attorney that would take that up probably yeah i that would that would surprise me if an appointed board and commission just is able to to start investigating private business and and handing out judgments yeah yeah well anyhow Going back to their website. Yes. This is I found very funny. Okay, well, it's funny to somebody like me who, who <laughs> looks at this stuff. Yes. Here's the big thing on their website, one of their, one of their big highlighted things to click on. City celebrates passage of 2020 budget. Celebrates. Yes. I don't, I don't celebrate. When they, they all went out to happy hour yes. afterward. They celebrated. I'm sorry. The only people that have a right to celebrate after the passage of a budget would be Oak Grove. Yeah. <laughs> yeah pretty much. It's zero again. All yeah. right. Pretty much. Yes. It's pretty much the only place. Yes. You'll be glad to know this entire article. And I don't, again, I don't know how Indiana cities are funded. Um, I don't know what their property tax rates are, if they have local government aid. I, I don't want to know. That's too much work to look into that. Okay, <laughs> Sorry, it just is. I don't want to well, bore until people. They, until they start hiring us to do stuff. Yeah, but I mean, I don't want to bore people with numbers and budgets right. and that crap. But I'm just, I'm, I'm fascinated by this entire thing. Mentions nothing about an increase in anything or um, what <laughs> citizens are going to have to do or pay or what this right. costs you. Maybe you won't be so happy about it if if you know you know um, if you actually knew all of that. But here, last night, this is dated October fifteenth, two thousand nineteen. Okay. Last night, the South Bend Common Council mm-hmm. adopted the final budget of Mayor Pete Buttigieg's administration, representing the culmination of months of public hearings. They probably had one and budget. Input sessions, despite revenue challenges, I mean, they're always challenged. Oh yeah, There's always, never enough always money. revenue challenged, stemming from the full implica- implications of property tax caps. Hmm. So the legislature must have told them, no, you can't jack it up fifteen percent. Yes. The 2020 budget sets up a city for continued financial stability. By presenting a balanced budget, which they probably have to do by law, uh, in the city's operational funds. Now, of course, key words there, Jay, that you and I look for. Yes. Operational. Yes. Okay, that's the day-to-day stuff. Salaries, benefits, toilet paper, pencils, new computers, chairs, yep. uh, electric bill, phone bill. Of course, that's not all the money that's spent. We, that's, right. I mean, that's, uh, you know. Street sweepers, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so uh, not the street sweepers. Oh, that that's not buying them. No, operating, operating them. them. So yeah. Putting the gas in is comes yep. out of one pocket. Buying them comes out of the other. Pocket. Right. That's a different fund. So with the government, you got to have twenty pockets. Okay. Uh, and of course, the major while well, the majority of the three hundred and fifty-eight million dollar budget covers, quote, baseline spending, which, of course, is is starting with what we had last year and using that as a minimum. Right. So, um, covers uh, essential government services, blah, 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 blah. The city administration will use the roughly $50 million dollars in, quote, strategic spending to continue to and accelerate the process of neighborhood revitalization. Ooh. $50 million. Now, Jay, to put that in perspective, you're talking about a city of 100000 If mm-hmm. I took Crystal and even New Hope, Golden Valley, and Robbinsdale, I'd yes. probably get maybe 80000 as a population. Yeah. Something like that? Yeah. Their budgets combined, combined, 
are nowhere near three hundred and fifty eight million. No. They're fifty million to spend on revitalization. Do you remember uh from the podcast that we did on the levy limits a while back? What was Saint Paul's uh with Knocker? Uh, yeah. The Knocker didn't vote for? Yeah. And Daitao? Yeah, Daitao where uh, what was their budget? I want to spend more because this yeah. doesn't have everything I want in it. Yeah. What was their budget? Do you, do you remember? Less than that. I want to wow. say 198 was yeah. the, mem- the number I remember. Yeah, I don't remember it being larger than this. Oh. St. Paul. Yeah. What are there, 250,000 people there yeah. maybe? St. Paul. Are we saying St. Paul's not so bad? Well, <laughs> I'm not saying it's good. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't give them that much credit. Melvin Carter will quote you on that one. Uh, but yeah, I mean that this is more. This is ridiculous. And yeah, fifty million dollars on neighborhood revitalization. Yeah, almost sixty-five percent of strategic spending in twenty twenty will be invested directly into neighborhoods in every corner of South Bend, enhancing access to affordable housing, making needed infrastructure improvements, and improving public safety and wellness. Well, and not to be outdone, Mayor Buddha Judge makes a uh, uh, chimes in here. Quote: The budget promotes. Equity, safety, there's that E word again, yeah. and neighborhood empowerment. What? What does that mean? And it will set the next mayoral administration on firm financial. Is he gone now? Uh, he must be up this year, this next year, I suppose. Okay, he's, he's just decided he's not running again. Well, I guess he's, he thinks guess he's, he's pretty confident. I guess he's pretty Well, he's mm. really not servicing as the mayor right now. It's Not really. Yeah. So, um, Anyhow, uh, so tremendous amounts of money being spent here. And yes. I'm going to tell you something. I cannot find on this website a full copy of their revenue and expenses. You get it broken up. I went to their finance page, and it was not easy to find. Okay, yeah. And they have all of these little PDFs for this and this and this and this, but they don't have a total anywhere. Hmm. I can't get to a total. Now, maybe one of you people at home in the pigeon gallery there can press pause and, and go find a total. Uh, maybe I just missed it. But it's it's not right there easy to click and easy to look like it should be. Right. So, once again, you get an A for exclusion, I guess. Oh, boy. So It gets better, Jay. Yes. Doesn't it? Uh, it's it's something. But can we talk for a moment, though? So we're talking about putting 65% of this back into neighborhoods. Um, and, you know, he, he did kind of spell it out as far as um, affordable housing, you know, mm-hmm. um, and neighborhood revitalization. I mean, you're looking at affordable housing, which... We all we know, know what we that knew. Means, yeah. Making needed infrastructure improvements, b- bridges, and uh, I would assume that that would also include any kind of light rail or rapid bus transit or or just normal bus infrastructure. Tod. Yep, any of that, and improving public safety and wellness. That's your bike lanes. That's your walking paths. Active that's, living. Yes, absolutely. So we see all the key words that we see. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, everywhere else that you and I talk about, it's the same thing, maybe slightly different wording, slightly different priorities. But once again, we're seeing the, and, and you see it, and I'm going to kind of jump around a little bit, Jay, because you see it everywhere in their climate action plan. Ooh. They have a climate, carbon neutral, what does it mean to be carbon neutral? Um, it you put means, out as much carbon as you take in. I I, I guess so. I, I so there's a plant for every. He, I don't know what I mean. I, it doesn't make sense. But anyhow, no, it just means that you're paying the government enough money to validate yes. the, your use of carbon. If you want to pollute, yes. you can pay to pollute. Yes, you can buy credits to go pollute. Yes. Well, the whole thing. 
about emission reduction goals and action areas. Transportation. Goal one, reduce VMT, vehicle miles traveled. Again, the war on cars. And reducing SOV, Mm. single occupancy vehicle. Yes. Uh, is a major goal of this uh, city. Reduce vehicle miles traveled and single occupancy. What will South Bend City Government do to do that? Well, they got a bunch of bullet points. Yes, they do. Lobby the Indiana State Legislature for an increase to transit funding. Translation, go ask... Another form of government to bring you free money. Yes. (laughs) Bring other people's tax dollars to South Bend. Advocate for a greater emphasis on transit within the project selection of MAGOG's Transportation Improvement Plan. M-A-C-O-G. I don't know what that stands for. Must be like their MnDOT or something. So, so far we're going to lobby and advocate. Update the city capital improvements to prioritize transit investments, Mm -hmm. i.e. spending. Yes. Broker relationships between major employers, educational institutions, and transportation to provide employer-assisted transit programs. Jay, how many times have I said this? When business and government get together, who is the ultimate loser? We are. The they're arguing for a PPP. Old, yes. Public private partnership. Yes. That's what they're advocating for. We're going to get employers to somehow what, coerce employees into they taking won't transit. Coerce them. No, yes, they will. They well, will they will give them they tax won't. abatements. They yes. will give them tax free land by transit. They will do all of those things. TIF. Oh all, yeah. All no, those things that we see here. But what they call that is incentive laden uh policy making. And they even say that in this document that they want to use incentives to bribe people to to use transit. Now, uh, you know, well, that comes to business in the form of what you just said, tax abatements and TIF and the like. It then filters down to the individual employee because they often get discounted rates on transit. Uh, the employer will pay part of it and then the yes. they can afford to because that that's part of the deal, you know. Uh, we're giving you this TIF. We want people to use transit, you know, and so they get a special deal, and and it's partially paid for by the company. Yeah, the rest of it's paid for by the taxpayers. Yes. Um, oh, big time into biking. Mm-hmm. Promote and improve bike share and alternative mobility programs. What South Bend City Government can do? What can Mayor Pete do for you, South Bend? Broker relationships with bike and scooter share providers and properly regulate these programs under the goals and policies of the city's Bike South Bend plan. I did see that, but I didn't have the I didn't have the nerve to open it. Uh, wasn't easy to find either. You'd be surprised. Broker relationships between major employers, educational institutions, program providers to provide employer assisted bike share programs. Where have I heard that before? Oh, about five minutes ago. Yeah. Well, I mean, and how many times have we talked about it here with the nice ride bicycles and the the scooters that they're left all over the place, falling all over each other and Minneapolis, St. Paul, Golden Valley. I mean, they're all over the place. <sighs> Promote carpool and van pool services. Hmm. So, I mean, we we're back to the war on cars here. But, yes. I mean, what can South Bend do? Once again, we're going to educate businesses on carpooling programs. We have a program for carpooling. And provide them with incentives, i.e. tax dollars, to institute and maintain these programs and promote them with their employees. So you're going to come to work and South Bend's um, 
van sharing uh, program and you're all going to get a little pamphlet with nice pictures on it and you're going to get pictures of you're going to have the token black guy and you're going to have grandma and you're going to have the, the, the family and you're going to blah 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 all going to be on it with a bunch of trees and you'll see a lake behind you and all that uh, promoting their van shares carpooling program now who's who's doing the van sharing yeah, I don't. Are know. there incentives for an employee to buy one? <laughs> South Bend gonna? Uh, I don't uh, think so. No, but <laughs> so that's the kind of stuff going on. Not much different. But I mean, than the, the today. Metro Transit does the same thing here. Yeah, you know, yeah, they uh, do. there are carpooling incentives. There are, you know, uh, incentives to take transit. So it, it, it's it's the same thing that we do here in Minnesota. It's funny how the same things seem to be everywhere. Isn't that a coincidence? Uh, I mean, it's totally a coincidence. It's not a coincidence, no. It comes from the National League of Cities and (laughs) down to the... Speaking of that, that, you'll be be glad to know, South Bend, Indiana at the top, Mayor Pete Buttigieg. Yes. Said again here on Safe Streets. You'll be happy to know that in 2017, the National Complete Streets Coalition, a part of the Smart Growth America. Oh, Complete Streets and Smart Growth. All in one. I'm not even done with the first sentence. (laughs) Selected Uh, South Bend to participate. I'm sure it was just random. You know, we should make a bingo card to put out with this. I don't want to get bingo, though. That's the problem. (laughs) What do you win? A green step? (laughs) Selected South Bend to participate in the Safe Streets Academy. There's an academy for, you know, like a police academy. It's probably as ridiculous. Yeah, a program intended to help cities make tangible progress toward building safer streets for all their residents. Yes. As part of the program, the city is learning and using various best practices. In other words, you're copying people, uh, which, of course, in college would get you an F, in safety engineering countermeasures, tactical urbanism, creative placemaking, and community engagement. Notice always community engagement comes last. Right. Last, and somebody probably didn't had to go back and edit that and put community engagement in there. They forgot that. Right. So that... Placemaking, another term we've talked about a ton. Yes. I don't even remember what it means, but I'm sure it's bad. That's when you create a community around a specific place. You, oh, that's you, right. You, you have like murals and you have yeah. Uh, yeah, artwork, graffiti as we used to call it. Yeah. Watch West Side Story and that's what you have there. You got a little place for the Hatfields and McCoys to, to... Yeah, you know, the place for people to hang out, sit down, hmm. enjoy life together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they also have yes. they also have a list of things that they have done. The the selected the neighborhoods the traffic calming that they have put in. Oh boy. Wherever these are, Riverside Drive, that's in Back to the Future, and Hudson Avenue, Neighborhood Traffic Circle. There is an art installation painting to be completed in April, it says April 21 or April 2021, I don't know. Also, once again, in uh, Back to the Future, Riverside Drive, and California Avenue slash Leland Avenue, bump out pavement narrowing. Ooh. Martin Van Buren Street. No, it doesn't say Martin. I'm making that up. And Cottage Grove Avenue Neighborhood Traffic Circle. Would that be like a, a, a roundabout? Might be, or it might be the way uh, they're just, you know, there might be a number of houses on a circle or something. Like, it, like, a, like it, a dead end, kind of? Cul-de-sac? Maybe like a no end. <laughs> well, the, the next know. one, the next one that yes. I'm more confused, Lindsay Street, east of Shimon Avenue, Chicane. That's what it says. C-H-I-C-A-N-E. That's what they've done there. They've chicane. Cheech and Chonged. Chicane. They've chicane. What is a chicane? I don't know. Is that something you would get at Raising Cane's? 
Yeah, uh, maybe. Ch- chicane tenders. Ch- chicane kind of sounds like a song or like a <laughs> rap song. These yes. demonstration traffic calming projects are temporary installations for traffic study purpose. Oh, they're temporary. Oh, really? So we just we just put in a roundabout, but we're going to take it down. <laughs> because of this, the crosswalks are not meant to be ADA compliant as they are representative, blah, 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 blah. If these temporary things are... Uh, successful, there may be a permanent. A- oh, there may be. I guess we don't care about people with disabilities, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so that's the the South Bend. By the way, won an award yeah. uh, to implement safer streets. Wow. Uh, a chicane is a serpentine curve in a road, added by design rather than dictated by geography. Hmm. So it. They they do it to slow traffic down because which it never does. Uh, the perfect example, Andrew, yes. uh, in Crystal where they put in the uh, uh, medical center, they, they moved the frontage road and made the a backage, backage road, road. The backage yes. road, the famous has, back. It, it you know, I got to credit you. I got to credit you, Jay, because I had never heard of backage road. Yeah, I still don't know what the hell it is, but you're the first <laughs> person a, I ever heard quote backage road. It's a, it's a frontage road in the back, Andrew. Mm. <laughs> um, so that road has a number of curves that they put in there, and they put up signs to say 20 miles an hour around the curve, and it's supposed to make things slow down, except that it doesn't. People take that as a challenge. It's like, I'm, well, I can I'm like on the course. Audubon. I'm taking this at like 50. <laughs> it's terrible. It, it doesn't help anything. Mm. You know? But that that's why that group isn't They're in charge They're taking like anymore. a turn at Daytona. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. The, all of our, our friends and fans out there in South Bend, let us know how those chicanes are working out for you. Chicane. Yes. Chicane. Chicane. Doesn't that sound like a song? I think there's a, yeah. there's a song called to me, Chicane. To me, it sounds like something I'd get at KFC. I, I don't know. Huh. So. Huh. Oh, that, you're terrible. Yeah. You think I'm terrible at this show? I'll tell you what, I think you're worse, sir. That's probably true. All right, what, now, 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 what else we got here about South Bend here? What, what else are we, um, because like I said, their website is just a, just a uh, in fact, the Wall Street Journal, yeah, I'm just going to say something here. Yes. The Wall Street Journal has something. Jay, I'm going to send it to you. I, I read this, a little bit of this earlier and did not, uh, couldn't remember where I saw it. <clears throat> it has an article here. Why aren't Buttigieg rivals talking about South Bend? Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, nobody knows either. <laughs> um, nobody's challenging uh, what, uh, you know, like I said before, um, the mayor himself really is not even talking about uh, what's going on there either. So... Why bring it up if nobody else is going to bring it up, you know? Um, but they take some issue with uh, the uh, administration of Mr. Buttigieg. Hmm. Here's one example. Okay. The city's Board of Public Works uh, recently hired Oscola-based Indiana Earth, Inc., I'm sure I'm butching us, C. Cola, um, at the cost of $41,100 to dispose of portable buildings by the end of next month. Since March 2018, they've sat on empty city loan lots in South Michigan Street. The city is removing these units because of a safety hazard, blah, 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 blah. They've been broken into and become deteriorated not beyond repair. Hmm. Of course, when you're spending three hundred fifty-eight grand. You know, maybe uh, 41000 is just kind of a sparrow belch. <laughs> but I bet you didn't think you'd hear that word there. No, I did not. Wow. Well, but this guy's got a little Teflon here. Yeah. Um, it has a very high murder rate for a city of its size, mm-hmm. apparently. Um, public safety. But again, you know what? That's a double-edged sword in a democratic debate. 
Yeah. You know, because you're going to get, you're going to bring out the race stuff. You're going to bring out the profiling. Right. Uh, look at how they're attacking Mike Bloomberg right now. Yeah. About, about what, what happened in New York? The frisk and stop or whatever? Yeah, yeah. And, stop and frisk. Yeah. yeah. It, 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 believe it or not, I, I don't know that I, I don't know enough about it to render an opinion. But if you look at New York, crime actually went down. When Giuliani was the mayor and when he was the mayor. Yeah. Now, if that's your ultimate goal, okay, or, or fewer people owning guns, which yeah. is certainly a goal of Bloomberg, you'd think that actually would be cheered. It was at the time, but now it's not being. Right. So. No, here's what they say on South Bend's site about this. Uh, but there was a whole part about uh, gun violence and intervening in that. And... Um, See, they 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 won't say gang. <laughs> um, in fact, what it says is that uh, crime prevention efforts on groups most associated with gun violence is is what they're trying to target. Yeah. And it says right in here, why use the term group instead of gang? The purpose of SBGVI, South Bend Gun Violence Initiative, is to reduce That's violence. That's another Mayor Pete thing. Yes, it is. Way. Reduce violence and to stop the killing. Research finds that most homicide shootings are committed by members of highly active street groups. These groups are gangs, drug crews, and the like. All gangs are groups, but not all groups are gangs. I see. Where have we heard yes. that before? I don't know. But that's what these people do. It's like, let's just change the wording, change the I, language. They went to a focus group or yeah. a consultant or a think tank, and they came up with something like that. Yeah. I mean, we all know that's what happened. You know, right. if you can't have an honest conversation about it, how the hell do you expect to come up with a solution? You can't. I mean, come on here. Let's get serious. I mean, here's the point. Here's the point. Yeah. Mayor Pete is presiding over what every big city and most smaller cities yeah. are doing nowadays. And I'm sorry, I said gun violence intervention. It's group violence intervention. Yeah, group violence, yeah, I just want to be clear. Yes. They think their job now is to go create some utopia uh -huh. that the state or federal government isn't doing this and isn't doing that. And we don't allow disagreement around here. Mm -hmm. you no, know, there's one goal, one plan. You're not allowed any dissent. And we're gonna we're gonna do whatever we have to do to force you. To make all these changes. Right. Now, you find any big city, any, sit, any city with 40,000 people and more that doesn't have these action plans, this equity stuff, this transit plan, this mm -hmm. bike paths. And Mayor Pete is no different than any, but he's no different than Shep Harris. He's no different than yeah. uh, Jake Spano. He's no different than anybody in Minneapolis or St. Paul. He's no, no. different than they are. None at all. So what distinguishes this guy? What is the difference between what is the difference between him or Jacob Fry running for this office? Yeah. You know, except for Fry's in a city of three hundred and eighty thousand people. Right. You know, but I mean what is the what what does he have here to do? I mean, I guess he can distinguish himself as left as possible. And I don't know if that's what he's trying to do, but I mean I, but again it just comes back to this guy's been running for a year, and nobody... Nobody knows him. Nobody even cares to. Yeah. It's sort of amazing. I mean, I just... I, I'm, I'm struck by it. So, you know... Again, I mean, we're giving you the, the icing on the cake right now, but you want to bore yourself and read through all this, you know, feel free. But, I mean, again, it's the same thing. It, it's the equity... Diversity, all the buzzwords, uh -huh. sustainability, um, multimodal transportation, active living, mean, the same Transit, smart goals. The yeah, same garbage that we have talked about for damn near three streets. years on this yeah. program. Yeah. And, and like I said, city in a box. You go anywhere and it's, it's all plagiarism. Ka-chunk. Ka-chunk. There's no Ka nothing new in here. Yeah. There's no new idea. There's nothing. No. And give me a break. I mean, you could walk in. You could put anybody as the mayor there, and they would sit there and do this crap. Yeah. Well, not anybody. Well, anybody I, of his thinking. I, I think it's funny that you bring that up because that's the way it's designed. I have said this before once on this show, and I, I, I believe it's pretty controversial that 
city staff is a lot like the deep state. In the deep city or whatever you want to call them. I was here before you got here. I'll be here when yeah. you leave. These are the things that I want to get done. If I can't get it done when you're here, I will get it done when you're gone. But I am going to steer you to the utmost of my ability into the things that I want to accomplish. And that's true whether it's a city manager, whether it's a city planner, whether it is a community development director, whether it is a uh, uh, pl- planning I think I said planning, but you know what I mean. These people have an idea based on their professional groups that they're part of or based on what's being handed down to them by their state group. Uh, their, uh, the League, National League of Cities hands this down to every state group, and every state has one, and they then take that and they come up with their own policies based on what, you know, they put their own language their to best it or whatever. Practices yeah. or whatever. But it's yeah. the same stuff that comes down from this national group. And you, you have them and you have other national special interests that go around to every state. And they try to get these same things implemented no matter what. And so it really doesn't matter, you know, it, it, whether it's, it's Tobacco 21 or gear or, you know, you, you fill in the blank. You have the same things going on in cities across the country, whether it's here, uh, whether it's in <laughs> South Bend, Indiana, or whether it's it's out in Missoula, Montana, or whether it is, you know, it, it, as we've seen in Texas. Yeah, yeah, definitely, especially in the bigger cities. Mm-hmm. It, it is, it's ridiculous, and, and I don't seem... Uh, I don't understand how that's good for America. Uh, you know, democracy is the, the you know, l- experimentation lab of, or, you know, America is the experimentation lab of democracy, right? But I mean, but, but, but even though we're the, not a democracy. But that's the thing unquote, that makes this more head scratching is cities all, instead of copying each other, mm-hmm. should all be considering themselves their own laboratories. It's right. kind of like schools. I mean, yes. they should be their own laboratories of experimentation and innovation. Uh-huh. And it's not all their fault. Right. But that's not happening. It's not happening at all. No. Uh, these national groups are are forming policy for, for the cities across the country. Yeah. And who are these people making these policies? Who the hell are they? <sighs> Somebody off in Europe? I mean... <laughs> You know. Well, definitely Washington D.C., <laughs> but in some cases, yes. Oh. Huh. So, anyhow, go to go yep. to South Bend and yeah, uh, and, and that is southbendin.gov. That is how to find it, and uh, you can see for yourself. It's the same stuff. So, don't take our word for it. But you know what? You should take our word for. You should take our word that we know what we're talking about and that we have fought over the last 10 years, 11 years, whatever it's been now to try and educate people on what's happening at the local level. And with that, we have, we have things beginning to change. We see cities that are actually beginning to implement different policies. We see them taking a different road, uh, Rather than just going with with what's always been done, they're trying to do some different things. And we want your city to be a part of that. We don't want you to have to sit there with all these bike paths and walking trails and and uh, ever-increasing debt. And No, we know how you think. And you want to change this stuff, you know? Uh, but to do that, We need you. (laughs) We need you to step up and we need to do something together. Because let me tell you something. This is a cancer that is going to not only eat away your city, but it's, or our state, it's also, it's a nationwide cancer. And we see it at the national levels and we see it right now with what's happening in this fake impeachment battle that's happening where, where you've got, 
a State Department that thinks that they run the country and that the president should be doing exactly what they want because they've been there forever, all the way down to the, the lowest level of government where you've got these bureaucrats who have been there forever who want to steer the city in the direction that they want it to go. And they, you know, they, they can get a little testy when the people who were elected to office don't want to do what it is that the people who have been there, appointed and um, employed through the city or the school district or the county want to do. So what do we do about that? We need people with a backbone. We need people who are willing to stand up and say enough is enough is enough is enough. Maybe that's you. And maybe you can sit in on an advisory commission and when staff comes with a recommendation, maybe you can say, you know what, we're going to check that out for ourselves. Thank you very much. Thank you for the information. Thank you for the recommendation. We're going to go look it up for ourselves, and we're going to find out the truth, and we'll give you a recommendation based on what we think. And then maybe you want to get elected to a, a position and be able to say, you know what, thank you for your opinion. We were elected to make decisions. We will take it under advisement, and we will do what's right for this city, the school district, this county. If that's you, why don't you get a hold of us? You can do that. I mean, get a hold of us, you know, to tell us what's going on in your area. But even more so, if you want us to help you change your area, that's why we're here. We do this podcast every week because we want to give you the information that you need in order to be able to put up a fight and, and to do things differently, to, to dismantle the progressive machine that's being built across this country. You've come to the right place, but you need to get a hold of us first. That's the first step. C-O-M-M solutions, M-N at gmail.com. That's C-O-M-M solutions, M-N at gmail.com. And from there, we can build Team 20K to be able to go out there and take 20,000 appointed elected local seats across this state to be able to change things and put the power back in the hands of the people and take it out of the bureaucrats. Because that's our sickness. That is our problem. That we allow these bureaucrats to run things and say what they want to do. And there are too many politicians out there that just agree with them anyways. And because we don't know who we're electing half the time, you know, we just go along with it. It's time that we get educated. Education is power. Let's take the power back. Let's get educated. Because that is when we are going to take our country back. It's not going to happen by sitting and watching reruns of Cheers or Knots Landing on TV. It, it's good. I don't even know if that's on TV anymore, Andrew. But let me tell you. <laughs> it's on Nick at Night somewhere. Knots Landing is on Nick at Night. <laughs> All those, all you kids watching right, Knott's Landing. Right after Dynasty in Dallas <laughs> <Yes>. and uh, <laughs> NYPD Blue. Oh, boy. You know, so th th that's our call out to you. You know, do you care about your city? Do you care about your county? Do you care about your state? Do you care about your nation? We need to put an end to the cancer that is bureaucrats. Serving in government, let me re rewind that. Bureaucrats serving themselves while being employed in government because they're not serving you. So with that, we're going to be back one week from now with a whole brand new mess of stuff for you. But uh, pass this around and uh, get the word out there. That's how we win, is one mind at a time. So thank you so much for listening again this week. We are so thankful for you. Now, we've done our part. We love you, Minnesota. Now it's your turn to get to work.
Get too caught up.